Almost two years ago, I made a video titled Proof Holland Isn't Human. That video is now gone after a bunch of problems with copyright, but at the time, that sentence was the only way I could convey just how impressed I was with the then 20-year-old striker who had played just 32 matches for Dortmund, scoring 33 goals. And somehow that title has never been as relevant as it is today. Ever since I heard of the kid who put up 9 goals in a match against Honduras, I had been waiting for him to follow the footsteps of his dad and join the Premier League. But I could never have guessed just how incredible it would have been. Just two months ago, I remember talking to my dad about his upcoming debut, saying, I can bet you he will break the Premier League goal-scoring record, and I don't mean one day, I mean in his debut season. It looks now like even that prediction isn't quite hitting the mark. At this rate, Holland is set to score 57 Premier League goals by the end of the season. The record, you ask? Well, that's a measly 32 set by Mohamed Salah in 2018, or maybe 34 by Andy Cole and Alan Shearer in the 90s if you count the old 42 game seasons. Regardless, at this rate, Holland should break that record in late January in their match against Wolverhampton, with 17 matches left in the league season. Still, it must be said, I was shocked to see that so many people seemed unsure if he was gonna make it in the Premier League or not. Some of the takes I heard were just insane. Just, just look at this one. Erling Haaland will not live up to the expectation. I am so bored. Why, Why won't Flip he? It. Because, because Flip he it. isn't because he isn't the player that everybody thinks he is. People are saying that he's going to win the Golden Boot. It's so disrespectful to the establishment. Being the city the striker, the Mo Salah, the Mo Salahs of the world, the the Harry Kanes of the world, the Hummin Sons of the world. Give them the respect to turn up in a new league and win the Golden Boot. That would be a ridiculous achievement, and he isn't going to do it. How many There's, goals <laughs> is is he going to score this? Season? I think I think he'd do really well to score. If he scores 15, it would be a really good season for him. <gasps> Yeah, this guy has probably regretted that sentence by now, but it is impressive just how many people thought he wouldn't make it. I get that there was Timo Werner, Lukaku, Falcao, Iguain, and even Shevchenko back in the day, but that doesn't mean every foreign striker is just bound to flop in the Premier League. To say that about Haaland just doesn't make sense. In the worst 10-game stretch of his career, he scored 4 goals, and that's because he went through 2 injuries in a row, and still, at that rate of 4 goals every 10 matches, he would get 15 Premier League goals in a season. Come on now. It's been two months and he has broken so many records, it, it's hard to keep up. At this very moment, he scored only one goal less than the top four highest goal scorers of the previous season combined. Just the other day, he scored two consecutive hat-tricks, only five players had ever managed to do such a thing and all of them played at least nine seasons in the Premier League. Holland had played just five matches before he managed to do it, and two games later he got another hat-trick, this time in the Manchester Derby, on his very first time playing it. No Manchester City player had ever scored a hat-trick in the Derby. Well, I guess one had. Kanchelskis, he did play for City, in fact he even played with Holland's father, and he did score a hat-trick in the Derby, but the thing is, he scored it six years before joining City while playing for United, so... A bit awkward, huh? Well, speaking of awkward, in 2021, Guardiola cried as Aguero left the club after 10 seasons, saying no one could ever replace him. The best start to a Premier League season ever had come from Aguero and Mick Quinn, both with 8 goals in their first 5 matches. But the thing is, on his debut, Aguero scored two, then none on his second match, on the third, he scored another, and then a hat trick in the fourth match. But so did Haaland, exactly in that order, an exact copy of Aguero, but on the fifth match, Aguero scored two and Haaland scored three just to break his record. Seemed almost like he did it on purpose. In fact, he's now only eight goals away from outscoring Aguero's Premier League debut season and has already outturned the tally from his second season with City. Speaking of Aguero, his best ever tally in a Champions League season was six goals. Haaland is already at five and he's only played three matches. If he keeps scoring at this rate, and City go all the way till the final, not only could he bring the trophy to the Etihad, he would also end up being at around 43 career goals in the Champions League, putting him above Aguero in the all-time top scorer's table, despite being just 22. Also, wasn't it a bit weird that Aguero said, Haaland thought he was alone but then came Virgil van Dijk and said welcome to the Premier League after their recent match with Liverpool? Don't know about you but that felt a bit bitter to me. <laughs> 
Speaking of bitterness, if someone has a reason to feel that way, it's Harry Kane. Holland has been so incredible that he completely outshined what has been Kane's best ever start to a Premier League season with 9 goals in 10 matches. The Holland talk has been so overwhelming that it seems I've heard no one talk about that. Another crazy thing, Michael Owen was the Premier League's most impressive wonder kid probably ever and maybe his most impressive record was scoring his third hat-trick at just 19 years of age after only 48 matches, the all-time record. Well, Holland just broke that record, scoring his third hat-trick after just 8 matches, 40 less than Owen. Michael Owen would go on to become the second youngest player to ever win the Ballon d'Or, so I'd say Holland's chances at snatching next year's award are already pretty good. I could keep going, there's a million stats like this already, but the most impressive thing of all is that, as I was saying before, this isn't new, at least not necessarily. Holland has been impressive since he was born. Everyone already knows that he was born in England and that his father is Alpha Hinga, former captain of Man City, and there's that picture going around showing that his cousins are also footballers and both scoring at ridiculous rates. And that's real. The Holland just had his competitive debut and scored his first goal despite only getting 7 minutes of game time. Jonathan just got transferred to a first division team in Norway after scoring 11 goals in seven matches and he even has a sister who's also a professional football player. But what many fail to realize is that those two cousins come from his mom's side of the family and guess what? She's also amazing. She was a track and field athlete specializing in heptathlon, an event where you have to do everything pretty much, from sprinting to high jump and even javelin throw and she was literally the Norwegian champion in this sport. So that's where Holland got his cyborg genetics from. It was also his mom who insisted he did track and field from a young age and before you claim that doesn't mean much, let me tell you that to this day, Holland is still the world record holder for the longest jump ever recorded by a 6 year old. Which sounds insane. They also put him up for all kinds of other sports from skiing to tennis and handball because Alfie thought playing different sports would allow him to develop every side of his body from a young age. And if young Holland wasn't obsessive enough already, when they moved to Bryna, the city was so isolated and cold that their five-a-side indoor football pitch was the only place where you could keep busy. So Holland was always in there training and you know what's funny? The only proof we have of a young Holland having fun is that rap video he once recorded with his friends and even there, I kid you not, one of the kids is Eric Bottheim, who's now playing in Serie A and just a year ago destroyed Mourinho Roma with 3 goals and 3 assists in a single match playing for Bodog Glint. And the other kid is Eric Sandberg, who's now playing in the first tier of Norwegian football. It seems he was always surrounded by footballers, maybe that's why from the moment he began playing football, everything happened so fast. At the age of 4 he began playing for Brian FK and with his first two touches he scored two goals and was put to play with the older kids. By the age of 15 he was already playing for the main squad in the Norwegian 2nd division and had scored 18 goals in 14 matches for their B team, playing among fully grown adults which brought him offers from Offenheim and Molde. So he joined the second being coached by Solskjaer and once again he quickly moved again, one season to adapt and then one where he averaged a goal contribution every 93 minutes despite still being only 17 and he was off to Red Bull Salzburg. This team was phenomenal, alongside him he had Hishan, Zoboslai, Minamino and Haaland, all their all to Mino Hayola, his late agent and his dad. It must be said these two together performed a master class in youth management so far. Every contract was carefully crafted to afford Holland the highest degree of freedom possible, which in this case included a release clause of only 20 million euros, meaning that if Holland took off, he would easily have every club in Europe jumping at the chance to sign him. Rayola and Alfie had pretty much forced Salzburg to sign themselves away as a stepping stone in Holland's career. And it went exactly as planned. Holland scored 28 goals as well as 5 assists in 22 matches for the club, debuting the Champions League with a hat-trick, totaling 8 goals in 6 matches, getting 1 every 44 minutes while taking down everyone from Liverpool to Napoli. But against all odds, when everyone expected Salzburg to be the new 2018-2019 Ajax, 
They missed qualification to the knockout stage, which meant Holland had to move. I mean, he was literally the UCL top scorer at that point, he had to be in the competition. But as predicted, his market value was now at an estimated 45 million and his release clause was only 20. But it seemed too early to make the big move to one of Europe's greats, so they pulled off another stunt, getting Dortmund to sign him in January on a contract with a 60 million euro release clause. It was even more obvious than before that they were just another stepping stone, keeping Holland at the edge of the spotlight while he prepared to take over Europe. And once again, it worked out amazingly for them. After just 59 minutes playing for Dortmund, Holland had already scored 5 goals, including a hat-trick on his debut, making him the Bundesliga player of the month without even playing the equivalent of a full match. Only one month after his debut, he was already on 11 goals, having played the full 90 only twice, even scoring two against PSG and clocking a 60-meter sprint in just 6.64 seconds in that same match. But against all the odds, PSG came back in the second leg and knocked Dortmund out of the competition, leaving Haaland in limbo once again. Which would become a familiar feeling. The following season, he would open the Champions League campaign with six goals in the four group stage matches he got to play, before putting up four goals and an assist in the last 16 matches versus Sevilla, before eventually going down to City in the quarters. Even more frustratingly, despite getting the Golden Boy Award being the top scorer of the Champions League and totaling 41 goals and 10 assists in just 3500 minutes of football, the German Cup was his only trophy of the season. But if everyone was already desperate to see him move to another club back then, it got worse the following season, with Dortmund dropping down to the Europa League and being knocked out immediately with Haaland out injured in both occasions. Still his numbers were once again off the charts and he had only nearly missed out on the Ballon d'Or top 10, which meant his market value had skyrocketed to an absurd 150 million, nearly three times more than his release clause. Haaland was once again a kid in a candy shop, it was only a matter of choosing what team he liked best, and after lots of flirting with with Real Madrid, he ended up picking his father's old team Man City. We're talking about a team that have constantly been the favorites to win the Champions League, a team that has seemed virtually unbeatable for the last five years, constantly creating chance after chance, many coming from a man who might just be the most prolific creator in Premier League history, a team that seemed to only fail because they could not seem to fit a proper old school number 9 into their style of play. Now getting to add to their squad, a 22-year-old 6'4 half-man half-giant that is somehow still fast like an Olympic sprinter with nearly 200 career goals already and a special liking for the UCL. It really looks like it's game over for everyone else. But if this fit seems perfect already, let me tell you that once again, they have made sure Haaland has complete control over his future. Without Mino Hayala, who surprisingly passed away in April of this year, Alfie managed to negotiate an impressive release clause deal once more. This time around, Haaland's release clause will only be active after his second season with the club and is set at 200 million euros. But there's a catch. After his third season, it decreases to 175, which is already at this point only 25 million more than what the player is being valued at. And even that seems already very likely to change after the next update to the player's market values, with a training suggestion being that Haaland's should be already set to 200 million. It seems nothing can stop Haaland from completely taking over the sport for the next decade. Obviously he has the firepower on the pitch, he doesn't seem to be worried with living a celebrity lifestyle, I mean just look at that video of him walking down some street in Manchester like it was nothing special or literally any of his interviews, he clearly only cares about scoring goals. And above all, he seems incredibly hardworking, just look how much muscle Messi has put on over the years, it's incredible. However, I think the hype has led many to overlook just that. His size might just be what will ruin all of this. It's been widely noted across pretty much every sport that bigger, heavier, taller players are much more susceptible to injury. In basketball, players over 7 feet tall are 70% more likely to miss a game through injury. In American football, across every position there seems to be a trend of heavier players getting injured more often. From the higher amount of force being exerted in your joints at 
with every stride, from a higher center of gravity making you more prone to falls, it is a serious problem and Holland has already shown to struggle with it. Just last season he missed 95 days, that's 16 matches, more than a third of the season, and in the two seasons before that he missed 40 and 47 days, even at Molda he missed 21, clearly it seems to be getting progressively worse and it has already been a scare just two months into this season. He has already been rested versus Copenhagen and Guardiola claimed that despite playing versus Liverpool, he may miss the next match and is not fully fit. I guess all we can do is hope for the best and to all of those that have put bets that he'll hit the 40 goal mark in the Premier League, I hope you're right but maybe keep an eye on his medical reports.